Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I looked at the Breeders' Cup website uh, this morning, and it said 23 days till the World Championships. Yeah, it's time to get serious, Matt. We're talking Breeders' Cup more. You know, it's hard to talk about all 14 races in depth here, Matt, but we're going to look at all 14 races. We're going to talk about our early picks to win all 14 races. We didn't really look at odds. We're not talking about how we're going to bet the races. We're just talking about the 14 horses that each of us feels like is the most likely to win the Breeders' Cup races. Are you ready to roll, my friend? I am ready. We'll give you some ideas, folks, for you to start thinking about uh, three weeks out. Yeah, let's let's do it, Matt. We'll start big. We'll start with the classic. And uh, I, I think it's a wide open race, Matt. Um, the likely favorite, I think, is the one you think is the most likely winner in Archangelo. Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the backdrop on this one is that this is a really interesting uh, clash between three, four, five really nice three-year-olds against the older horses. And I feel like Archangelo uh, is the leader of those three-year-olds. Um, boy, he's gotten so good uh, as the summer has gone on. And I also like that trainer Jenna Antonucci already has Archangelo out in California to acclimate. He's been out there for a week or so already. Yeah, that seems to be a trend. Uh, the horse I picked has been out in California for a while as well, White of Barrio. White of Barrio. I, I've gone back and forth a little bit with these uh, Go Rocket Ride, uh, Slow Down Andy, who's now out of the race. I could see the Japanese horse uh, certainly winning this. Uh, I do worry about Archangelo a little bit. All of his stakes wins have come in New York, the three-year-old coming west to Santa Anita. So I'm going to try to beat the favorite. And, and White Obario is the horse I'm on right now. I just think he's getting really good for Rick Dutro. Always a class horse, but Dutro seems to have taken to him to, to a new level. Seems to be doing really well out in California. It will be an interesting classic, Matt Shipman. Next on our list, Matt, we're going to look at the female set, and that would be the distaff we'll go to next. And uh, we have different thoughts in this one, which is a bit of a trend here, Matt. We don't have many selections the same. Yeah, I think that's okay. We'll give the the, the viewers more to think about. Um, I heard from a Breeders' Cup official uh, last weekend that uh, they are expecting an unusually large field, the distaff, which kind of comes up, which kind of comes up uh, on the small side frequently. I've gone to Clarier, uh, two big reasons. I think uh, I think she's got excuses in her last two races. I think she is going to be forgotten and produce good odds, and I like her off-the-pace running style because this distaff field is going to be loaded with speed, including your choice, Brian. Yeah, Idiomatic has won seven of eight. There's no doubt she's been the best uh, uh, female dirt horse in the country this year. Uh, seven of eight, and she's gotten better and better for trainer Brad Cox. She's coming off two big grade one wins in a row, including last week's spinster. But there will be speed, and, and I do like your pick, Matt. Claire Ayer has proven herself in the Breeders' Cup this time before with two narrow misses. So Claire Ayer will be on my tickets. But the most likely winner for me is the horse that's been winning all year long. That's Idiomatic. Let's move on, Matt, to the Breeders' Cup turf next. And we're not on the Americans here. I, I think there are some good Americans. Up to the mark is very good. Warlike Goddess is very good. But the Europeans are our top picks. Yeah, uh, you know, I think clearly, Brian, those two that you mentioned have are have been and certainly right now are probably the best two turf horses in our country. But I, I just don't think that they measure up to uh, the Europeans in the turf. Uh, I've gone with uh, Mustafa, uh, comes from the barn of John Gosden, who has won the won five Breeders' Cup races. Uh, uh, this guy has a couple of nice group one wins in a row and has uh, one from a little farther off the pace and one a little closer to the pace. So I like that. Yeah, he, he's a bit of a monster. I wonder if he's better at 10 furlongs than 12 furlongs, and he might be running at Ascot next week, which would be a short turnaround. But Gosden, as you said, has had a lot of success in the Breeders' Cup, as has Aiden O'Brien. And August Rodin has been a top-notch horse 
both of his years. He was a very good two-year-old last year in Europe, a very good three-year-old. Derby wins, uh, plural, and uh, coming off a nice win in the Irish champion. I, I think of the two, he's the mile and a half horse, but you have the older powerhouse in Mostada. In interesting pair there, and I'm sure uh, internationally, uh, the horses will be well represented in the Breeders' Cup turf. Matt, next we're going to go with the Breeders' Cup sprint, and I'm wondering if we're going to agree on any of these races. Uh, oh, there, there we go, Matt. Breeders' Cup sprint. We are on the same horse, and it's not the defending champion, Elite Power. No, it's not, Brian, and uh, this is Echo Zulu. Uh, if she goes in the sprint taking on the boys um i think that's where they're learning leaning it's a bigger purse but boy she has been so impressive in those three wins this year just super super fast super fast and super good she's always been class she's a breeders cup winner in the past of course and uh yeah, she she has been, I think, the best sprinter in the country this year. I think six furlongs at Santa Anita will suit her well. I do think her connections will pick to go here against the males over the seven furlongs of the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. Elite Power, uh, obviously a really good horse and a big threat to win two in a row. But we agree. Echo Zulu, the one to beat right now in the Breeders' Cup Sprint. Matt, next on the list, let's see. We got oh, we got the dirt mile. This is an interesting race, and um, you, you you're looking at the defending champion, who I'm sure will be favored in this race, and obviously a big shot. But I think he's beatable in here. I guess anybody's beatable, Brian. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, you know, uh, his race around two turns was you know uh, uh, not particularly good and and thus moved back in distance i don't think necessarily it was the two turns i think it was the distance because he won the dirt mile last year going around two turns yeah and, and i hate to say this because he's so good and and if i had to pick the best horse in america it still might be cody's wish but i wonder if his last two races and, and i'm including the recent vosberg win which he really didn't beat much have been quite as good as we saw earlier this year or last year? It's a small question in my mind, as is his late running style at Santa Anita. Um, and, and maybe I am thinking the odds just a little bit, but I've always liked Practical Move. I loved his return race recently, a powerful uh, a win at one mile at Santa Anita. This horse loves Santa Anita and he's very good. They're still deciding between the classic and the dirt mile, but I, I think the dirt mile makes a lot of sense for Practical Move. Uh, next on the list, Matt, is the Philly and Mare Sprint. We are different again. You went with the defending champion again. I went with the defending champion. Uh, just an absolutely terrific horse. And if that Echo Zulu is not in there, I don't know. She's going to be very tough to beat. Yeah, good night, Olive. Love seven furlongs. I will say, just like Cody's wish, I wonder if she's quite as good as she used to be. That's a question. Echo Zulu did beat her easily at Saratoga. I, on the other hand, am, am, am picking a reason why I think Echo, another reason why I think Echo Zulu is headed to the sprint, and that's because Asmussen thinks he can win this race with Society. Society has blazing speed, and her wins in less than marquee tracks, Ellis Park and Church, uh, Charlestown, were huge. I think Society could take this field all the way around in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Marish Sprint. Hey, we're in agreement again, Matt. Uh, we got the turf sprint up there. And I see you are picking a lot of defending champions, sir. Um, I think that's a, a coincidence. But, yeah, it, it certainly it looks that way thus far. Uh, uh, boy, Caravel has been very, very good since she and, – and maybe I've said this before too, Brian – since she has joined the barn of Brad Cox. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, specialized distance. I always like the Americans uh, in sprint races over Europeans. Yeah, and, and to tell you the truth, it might be a European that's favored in here. Highfield Princess coming off a big win is supposed to be coming over. Caravelle will have at least decent odds, maybe not quite as good as last year but coming off that loss at Saratoga. But that was on a turf course where I don't think she liked. 
five furlongs, which the turf sprint is this year at Santa Anita, on a firm turf course, Caravel, I think, will bounce back in a big way, and I think she's got a great shot to do it again, just like you, sir. All right, we're still on the Saturday races, the older horses. We're going to go Philly and Merrick Turf. American fans might not recognize the names that we're picking as our early top picks here, Matt. Yeah, could be. Uh, I'm going with uh, Jackie O, who uh, is a European from the barn of Aiden O'Brien. And we, we know how many times he has won Breeders' Cup races. Um, she is a, a, a turfer who is on the way up in my eyes, had a really good second. Uh, in the uh, Prix d'Opera in France on Arc Day. Yeah, that was a good performance from Jackie O, and she does look to be on the improve for a trainer Aiden O'Brien. But I'm on the other Aiden O'Brien, uh, and it'll be interesting to see if both come over. I, as far as I know, both are uh, scheduled to come over. Like I said, Aiden O'Brien will have a bunch over here. And a lot of live horses. Warm Heart, Heart has been an absolutely terrific three-year-old. I think she's the best three-year-old filly in Europe. She's won multiple oaks over there. She, too, is coming off a nice win. Aiden O'Brien says a mile and a quarter on firm turf American-style racing is exactly what Warm Heart we, uh, wants. That's enough for me. I think she wins this filly and mare turf on class, Matt. And uh, we are not done with Saturday yet. We still have more from Saturday before we finally get to the two-year-olds. Let's see what else. The one we've missed, oh, it's the mile. That's a big one to put last on our list here, Matt. But the mile is always an interesting race. It's a race that often there's there's some decent prices that either win or, uh, or, or fill out the exotics. And we're on two different horses, Matt. Uh, your horse is uh, coming from uh, overseas. Yes, uh, my horse is uh, is a Japanese horse, uh, Philly, also uh, uh, of interest. But but we know that Phillies have won the uh, mile in the in the past. Uh, I think this is this is a horse that's going to come with good odds. Was second last time after kind of having a bad trip, but a good second. Yeah, she, she finished well. There were a scrum of horses together, but that was her uh, first race off a little bit of a layoff. I almost picked her. Songline is a terrific, terrific Japanese uh, uh, female. And, uh, you know, it's tough to come over and beat the males at a mile over here, but uh, it's been done before, not by a Japanese female in the mile, but uh, uh, feel, uh, females have won this race, as we know, many times over the years. Uh, uh, Goldakova and Mieska, of course, being two. And Songline is for real, and I think that's a very good pick, Matt. Charlie Appleby, though, it's hard to look away from Charlie Appleby in races like this. Of course, he won it last year. Charlie Appleby, just so successful in North America. He spots his horses very well. Masters of the Seas probably didn't have um, uh, the uh, superstardom over in Europe that uh, some of the other horses will be seen in the Breeders' Cup did. But Master of the Seas has run two big races. I'm an up-to-the-mark fan, and Master of the Seas was nose and nose with him at the finish uh, last week at Keeneland. Uh, he also ran a very, very good race at Woodbine in the Woodbine Mile. So for me right now, the most likely winner of the Breeders' Cup Mile is Master of the Seas. All right, Matt, that was nine races on Saturday. We're going to have to... Uh, delve into some of these races quite a bit more before we make our final picks. We're going to see, obviously, the post position draw and all that, morning line odds. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, once again, this is uh, setting up to be a very interesting Breeders' Cup where I, I don't necessarily think there are a lot of locks. Maybe we'll see more locks in the two year old races, but I'm not sure we're going to agree. Let's jump to the juveniles. And yeah, yeah, we're we're disagreeing on this one too, Matt. Um, I think there might be a common theme between the two picks here, though. You're on Prince of Monaco. Yeah, I, I think we're disagreeing in horses, but I think we're on the same uh, from the same barn, uh, uh, Brian. I, I'm going to go with Prince of Monaco in here, although you know, I think this is a bit of a wide open race, but Prince of Monaco for Baffert, 
uh, three for three, uh, has one, uh, has the fastest buyer speed figure of any two year old this year. Yeah, Prince of Monaco was excellent in beating Muth two starts back in the best pal. That that was at a different distance, though. This is this is two turns. This is a mile 16th at Santa Anita. I, I think the tables could turn. In that best pal, they were both making their second career start, and Prince of Monaco just rolled right by him. Muth was good enough to hold on for second after a not the best start in the world and then battling on a fast pace. I really like that Muth got the two-turn prep in. I really like that Moose was able to come from a little bit off the pace in the American Pharaoh. And I like the way he beat another Bob, ba a good, another good Bob Baffert horse and won the uh, Prince of Monaco hasn't run since winning the Del Mar Futurity, which I didn't think was quite as impressive as the best pal. I think these might be the two favorites. I think Prince of Monaco is probably the favorite, but there should be several horses who get some money here. I like the way Muth won last week in the American Pharaoh over the track at the distance. He'll be my pick in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Matt, we're going to move from the males. We're going to stay on the dirt, but we're going to move from the males to the Phillies next, the juvenile Phillies. And uh, why don't you give uh, you know a little information out for the uh, the Horse Center fans here with your pick in the juvenile Phillies? Yeah, juvenile Phillies is in even more wide open race than the juvenile. I feel like just about anything could happen in this race. I am going with just FYI. Just FYI is coming from the barn of Bill Mott. Bill Mott, who has won 12 Breeders' Cup up to this and has won so many, so many big races this year. Uh, most recently, she was the winner of the Frisette. I got to say, Matt, you surprised me with this pick. I, uh, I I know we both are fans of Bill Mott, and Bill Mott has not had the greatest two-year-olds over the years. He's generally been better with three-year-olds and older. Um, two nice wins, Saratoga and the Frisette. I just don't know what to make of that sloppy Frisette. I, I, I'm really unsure about just FYI, but she could be any kind, and it's interesting to see Bill Mott have a really good two-year-old. Hero Philly, I can't look past the daughter of Beholder. I, I, I do worry, much like I worry about Prince of Monaco a little bit, because Tamara's uh, run at Del Mar, and she's, she's, she's run shorter. But so impressive is the daughter of Beholder in those two wins for trainer Richard Mandela. I, I think Mandela has a good one here. And, and it, it's uh, unusual to see a great, great race mare have a really top, top horse. But I think it could be happening here with Beholder and Tamara. I also like the fact that my, my worries are, are a little less when I saw how well Tamara's been working at Santa Anita since she won the Del Mar debutante so very impressively. So for me, the most likely winner has to be Tamara. All right, Matt, let's go to the turf and the two-year-olds next. A bit of a crapshoot, these three two-year-old turf races. Um, Juvenile turf, the males, at least, we're on the Americans. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, in terms of the turf races uh, at the Breeders' Cup over the years, the Americans have certainly fared best in these in the juvenile editions of turf races. I was I was very impressed with Agate Road's last two races, uh, um, a deep closer with a tremendously impressive turn of foot. Uh, um, it is hard to, you know, know with with these big fields for these two-year-olds, the quality of competition. But, wow, she is a, a, he is a runner down the stretch for Todd Pletcher, who uh, has won 14 Breeders' Cup races in his career. Yeah, visually impressive for sure. Agate Road uh, winning that Pilgrim last time where uh, he just mowed them down late. Uh, that could work again. We're talking about the juvenile turf. The juvenile turf Phillies are one mile at Santa Anita. Uh, and uh, Agate Road, uh, certainly impressive coming from New York. I, I'm on the Californian. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what to do here. Uh, Michael McCarthy. Uh, who used to train under Todd Pletcher in that barn. 
Uh, seems to have a very nice horse. He's won his races easily. He's won all three of his races easily. He's uh, won uh, stakes races at both Del Mar and Santa Anita, and uh, and he's looked good doing them. Uh, I like the fact that he's got a win over the track now or a win over the turf course there at Santa Anita. Endlessly has done nothing wrong, as they say. I'm going to stick with him uh, and, and see what the betting is like in this juvenile turf and see – uh, who the internationals are that come over for the two-year-old males. On the Philly end, Matt, uh, we uh, we went a little bit different here. And, um, again, you surprised me a little bit with your pick in the juvenile Phillies turf. Yeah, it looks like we are on Europeans uh, in this race, Brian. Um, I went with uh, Porta Fortuna, who is – who is – Racing for O'Brien, not for Aiden, but for Denatcha O'Brien. This filly has four wins in six starts. Yeah, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. She's been awfully good for, for months now. And as you say, she's won a bunch of races and a bunch of uh, uh, stakes races over there in Europe for, for, for the other O'Brien. I'm on the O'Brien. I'm on Aiden O'Brien. And Opera Singer has... Uh, well, wow. Opera Singer's been so good over there, uh, barring uh, barring one start. But uh, last time on Arc Weekend, she would she looked like a monster. That she could actually be one of my best bets of the whole weekend. Opera Singer might be that good, and um, we don't always see the horses who are favored for the Guineas. Uh, you know, they make those lines like we do for the Kentucky Derby six eight months out. Opera Singer is a hot favorite for the guineas next spring. And uh, I, I just think she's looking like a really, really good thing. And uh, once again, Aiden O'Brien bringing a top string over for the Breeders' Cup. Matt, we, we only have one more race, and it might be the race that we know the absolute least about. Um, but on the other hand, I, I think there have been some very impressive runners in the juvenile turf sprint division. And it uh, looks like we're going to see a good matchup between Americans and Europeans in this five furlong turf race. Yeah, uh, certainly a very tough uh, race to handicap and a very tough race to pick a winner in uh, uh, three weeks out. But uh, I'm going with No Name Mets from the barn of uh, George Weaver. Uh, no Name Mets went over to. Royal Ascot to run in a race that I think uh, 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 lost to um, uh, his uh, her stable mate in there from the barn of George Weaver. But since coming back to the United States, uh, this one has two really nice stakes wins. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe it's Monmouth Park and Colonial Downs, but don't take those smaller tracks. Uh, just like I talked about with Society earlier, uh, don't hold those against no-name mats. I wonder who the best two-year-old turf sprinter in George Weaver's barn is because that Philly's awfully good and that Philly might be headed to this race as well. So uh, George Weaver could be uh, loaded in the juvenile turf sprint. Um, and and to tell you the truth, I had a hard time separating the Weaver horses and I went European again, Big Evs, another uh, impressive, impressive horse coming over from Europe. It, uh, it seems like all systems are go. Uh, uh, Mick Appleby, it's an Appleby, but it's Mick Appleby, not Charlie Appleby, has this one. Uh, very impressed with his last win at Doncaster. And uh, they've said uh, right away, right after that win at Doncaster, that Big Abs would be headed over to Santa Anita for the Breeders' Cup. Juvenile turf sprint, Matt, that's 14 races. We did this, we got this through this uh, pretty quickly. Um, so let me let me ask you this. Archangelo is your early pick for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Is he your horse of the year if he wins the Classic? Oh, I would think so, Brian. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, but you win uh, your last three races, and they are in Grade Ones, and they are in, and they are in three of the most prestigious Grade One races in the Belmont Stakes: the Travers, and then beating older horses. Uh, uh, yeah, along with the storyline, I think he would be a runaway horse of the year. I think so, too. Yeah, one more question for you with the Breeders' Cup Classic. My top pick right now, uh, be it a 
a, a, a tough decision for me is why to borrow. Is he the horse of the year if he wins the Breeders' Cup Classic? I'm not sure, Brian, but let me say about White Barrio, I like him a lot more with the trainer change to Rick Dutrow. Oh, that's for sure, Matt. Uh, no, nothing against Happy Joseph, but White Barrio wasn't quite getting it done in the Safi Joseph farm. And, and the last two races, even the loss in the mat, I liked. Cody's wish was better, but I liked his performance where he went out uh, kind of dropped back a little bit, then came again in the Met Mile to be third. But the Whitney was a bomb. And, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. There are other options, too. Maybe Cody's Wish, maybe Elite Power, maybe Echo Zulu, maybe Up to the Mark. Uh, a lot of horses have a chance, but the Classic is the one that usually decides the horse of the year. All right, folks, uh, 14 races. We went rather quick. I hope you got them all. You can go back and look at these top picks, early top picks. And if you want to make a, uh, a little feature bet there, they're becoming more and more available to us, Matt, which is which is kind of fun. All right, let's get a parting shot from you, my friend, before we say goodbye. Yeah, I think this is an interesting show. I think Brian and I both have given you a nice mix of horses that – could be the favorite or certainly will be shorter prices along with some horses that are going to be at better odds. So, you know, that's the, that's the big challenge in the Breeders' Cup because you know in those 14 races there's going to be some big payoffs in there. It's just uh, getting lucky and, and falling on one of them during the card. Yeah, that's right. And and uh, long shots will be horses that Matt and I do play a little bit. So we're going to talk a little bit about that on a uh, horse center coming up real soon, a kind of a coming attraction there, Matt, if you will. I want to thank uh, Derby Wars, the, our, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. And most of all, I want to thank all of you for watching. We know we're gearing up for Breeders' Cup and we'll uh, see more of you watching here on Horse Center. Make sure you subscribe, turn those notifications on and, and leave us a comment. I enjoy reading the comments. As long as they're nice. Sometimes they're not always nice, but we still, I, 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 like, I like laughing at the ones that, tell me that I'm a dumb jerk sometimes too. So don't, don't be afraid to tell us uh, how, how wrong we are with these picks. Anyway, we'll be uh, amping up this Breeders' Cup coverage in the next few weeks. Join us every week right here on Horse Center. Until then, good luck. We'll see you then.